Tonight, 23-year-old Nicholas Humphrey is locked up. He'll make his first appearance in court tomorrow morning. He's charged with 13 counts of kidnapping, along with armed robbery and motor vehicle theft. Tonight, we're hearing more accounts of the moments when police say Humphrey opened fire inside the Community First Credit Union on Edgewood Avenue West. We're also, for the first time, getting an idea of Humphrey's mental state as described by his father. Our coverage tonight begins with Channel 4 Scott Johnson joining us live from the jail. Scott, his father said he feared as recently as last night that his son needed to be committed. He felt that way. Last night he was with his son, said he felt his son because of mental problems needed to be Baker acted, but he didn't do anything about it. This was hours before the hostage situation. However, he never thought his son was violent or would do anything like this. I spoke with Nicholas Humphrey's father at his Arlington home. He tells me he learned his son was involved in the hostage standoff like everyone else by watching it on the news. It's a tragedy. I mean, it's like, you know, like I say, I, I feel sorry for the victims, you know, and, and their family members that they had to go through such an ordeal. I just, you know, it, you know, it, it's heart wrenching, you know, because I mean, he's my son, you know, I raised him and he's a good kid, you know, good family, good home, you know, you know, never really had any major issues, but I, I know something mentally is, is going on. He says he spoke to his son just as recently as last night, and he tells me Humphrey was mumbling and had visible mental problems, even telling me he thought his son should have been committed for psychiatric evaluation, but Combe did not act. Have you talked to him in recently or not? No? Well, last night, yeah. You talked to him last night? Was there any issues from him that you got? or what? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I thought that maybe he needed to be vaporized. You but, did think that last night. Yeah, I thought it, but I mean, like I said, I mean, who do you call? I mean, you call, he's grown. You, you, you can't put a grown man in an institution unless he's doing bodily harm to himself. He wasn't doing bodily harm, so. Humphrey's father tells me his son had a good upbringing and only developed mental health problems recently. He said he did not know his son had a gun. Did he indicate violence at all? Or did you get that idea from him that he might be violent or he was just having problems? No, I just, me, myself personally, he's not a violent kid. Mm -hmm. You know, he never came across to be violent. Did he him. have firearms that you knew of? Not that I know of. So this is all news to you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's shocking news. And Humphrey is slated in court downtown here at the jail tomorrow for his first appearance. His father says he does plan on to be in attendance. He has not had a chance to talk to his son because of the chaos, but hopes to tomorrow. We're live downtown at the jail. Scott Johnson, Channel 4, the local station. Scott, thank you. Tonight, we're also hearing from one of the 13 people who went from bank customer to hostage inside that credit union. Roger Green says he prayed the entire time the man walked into the bank and began firing a gun. Green spoke with Channel 4's Francesca Amaker just a few hours ago. Fran, it's just so hard to believe that a routine trip to the bank quickly became a nightmare. But it happened for Roger Green, Tom. He said it was alarming. He said it was terrifying as he walked in this community, this community first bank, thinking that he was just going to de deposit a few checks. And tonight, when I asked him if he had anything to say to Nicholas, he actually said he has something to say to all of us. And the teller was trying to get some bill, I was trying to get some bill paid, information. And before I can get that straightened out, this man had done walked out and come back in with the dog, and he shot up in the roof and I took off. Roger Green says it happened within minutes. After he, along with several other customers, entered this community first credit union just after 9 a.m., police say this man, 23-year-old Nicholas Humphrey, walked out and then back in, but with a gun and demands. Did you hear him say anything? I didn't hear him say nothing, but I heard that bullet pop. And when that bullet pop, I... <laughs> You darted. You ran like you've never been run before. I ain't joking. Oh, my gosh. What was going through your head, Mr. Green, just knowing Ooh, that? Oh, Lord. Hard to say. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was praying every, every since when I got in there until I got out of there that he didn't come to that door. Green says he and two others locked themselves in an office just a few feet away from the gunman and remained silent. Another hostage, Frank Brown, says he and a woman were hidden and the suspect didn't know they were there. He says they decided to make a run for it, which distracted Humphrey. When I went to go, my leg was asleep. I took out about three rolls of chair, 
boom, 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 boom. But that was good because they started him and get him. He ran out to get everybody else a chance to run out the door. Police say that move allowed the SWAT team to enter the credit union and Humphrey surrendered. Green told me he's thankful no one was injured, but he did have words for the 23 year old who is sitting in jail tonight. What would you say to Nicholas Humphrey now? Uh, hard to say. But all I can say is God is still good. Amen. And who don't know God, they need to know him right now, not later now. Because life, life ain't, ain't, ain't promised to nobody. And according to officials, no one was actually hurt at this Community First Credit Union. But coming up at 11 o'clock, I'm going to tell you why Roger Green ended up going to the hospital after this ordeal. We're now reporting Francesca Emma for Channel 4, the local station. Family members waited frantically for more than two hours to find out if their loved ones were okay inside that credit union. One of those people is Clara Cruz. Her daughter's a teller and was in there when all this was going on. As soon as the hostages were rescued, her daughter called her on the phone. He was chasing you, Shonda. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord, have yes. mercy. I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I pray and I pray and I pray. Um, and God knows that he had already okay. worked it out. You could not miss today the enormous outpouring of support, not only for the teller, Cruz, but also for all of the people who were held hostage inside that bank. At a news conference at Humphrey's arrest, the sheriff said he couldn't think of a worse situation to be in as a law enforcement officer. The sheriff applauded officers and the SWAT team's quick response. He had developed a pattern of getting, you know, 40, 50 feet away from the hostages. So we felt like we could intervene at that point and again, put some people between him and the hostages and also have a team to confront him. Uh, so when the two hostages broke and ran, that was a great opportunity. And uh, we were able to do a couple sequence of events to get some people inside, get some people to confront him and he complied immediately and surrendered. The sheriff said because those officers made the right decision at the right time, they saved the hostages. Eleven were rescued, seven were customers, four were employees, two others are also considered hostages, but they were able to hide from Humphrey, as you heard, and escape on their own. Sheriff Williams also apologized to the mother of one of the hostages, a man who the sheriff mistakenly named as the gunman during a briefing after it was all over. As you can see in this video, the man who was incorrectly named walked out of the bank. He is with all the rest of the hostages. He is now with his mom in this video, a very relieved woman, of course. The sheriff's office soon sent out this tweet with a correction which reads, the name given in the news briefing is not the suspect. Latasha Schumann told us when she heard her son's name, she was stunned. My heart just dropped because, I mean, you, you a mother and about son name is being released as the suspect. Sheriff Williams apologized to that mother over the phone, then again publicly during our 5 o'clock news broadcast. The sheriff said the mistake was a result of a miscommunication. The standoff lasted several hours, and as police were directing people to stay away from the area, they also had people in nearby businesses stay put, lock their doors, and wait it out. We spoke with one woman who says her co-worker alerted her to what was going on. She said she had gone over to Family Dollar to get something to drink, and a gentleman said to her, be careful going back. They're robbing the salon, right? They're robbing the bank right now. She was like, what? So she reached back, got a drink, and left. She ran over, locked the door. Her and the customer, her customer, were here until they were allowed to leave. A credit union has been boarded up, and crews are working on getting the window and door fixed. It's expected to reopen Monday. Community First issued a, the credit union issued this statement, which reads in part, we're so thankful that today's hostage situation resolved itself in a safe way. Our hearts and prayers are with the families and membership. We're thankful and appreciative for JSO and law enforcement as they did a fine job handling the situation. Now we need to get back to our employees and membership and make sure everyone is taken care of. Thank you again. Bank employees, they receive training on how to handle robberies. Do you know how to respond if you wind up in the middle of a bank robbery or if you're held hostage? Kent spoke with our crime and safety analyst and joins us with what you need to know to survive. Kent?
Yeah, Gil Smith spent two decades as a police officer here in Jacksonville. He says the mentality you need to adopt in that kind of a crisis is comply and cooperate. The most important thing to remember is that the first 15 to 45 minutes are the most dangerous part of a hostage situation because the perpetrator, he's in panic mode. He's not sure what to do. Gil Smith walked us through what may have happened inside this Community First Credit Union branch and then talked us through how to respond if you are ever in that same situation, the same situation as these 13 people suddenly were Thursday morning. A key takeaway from Smith, don't resist. So you don't want to uh, resist. You don't even want to speak to them unless they speak to you or unless you absolutely have to. You don't want to give them too much more to think about or concentrate on. Smith says you should be observant, taking mental notes on questions like these. How many suspects there are? What they're wearing? What are they talking about? How many weapons and what kind of weapons do they have? It will also probably stand out to you, but if there are people injured, how are they hurt? To avoid being hurt yourself, Smith says a low profile is best. And the hardest decision you may have to make, though, is if and when to fight. That's a very tough question. If When should you run? When should you fight? And it really depends on your skills and ability and what's going on with the perpetrators, how dangerous you think they may be. So but one of the most important things early on is to really be polite with them. Try to build a rapport and get on their side. It doesn't apply to everyone, but Gil Smith says you should get rid of anything that may make hostage takers view you as a threat. For instance, she even hide or turn over or get rid of photos that you have with prominent family members or public officials. Finally, staying patient and polite could save your life, and as it did in this case, save the perpetrators. Joy?